Well, here we are again. <laughs> Good morning. A bit unfortunate about what happened earlier. We had some technical difficulties. So we're going to try again. And uh, I'll go from the beginning because you've probably forgotten what my first three points were. Uh, but let, let's pray and then we'll, we'll move on. So Lord Jesus, I thank you for your goodness and your grace. And uh, I ask that you would meet with us now as we hear your word. And I ask Holy Spirit that you meet with each one who uh, hears this word this morning. Would you speak, Lord, through uh, words that I say? In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so where were we? <laughs> well, I want, to talk, I want to talk to you about God's design and plan for each of us. And um, that's a huge subject, but I'm going to try and just talk very briefly about, about this. In my previous occupation, I was a design engineer and I managed a team of engineers. My job and the job of my team wasn't just design, though. We would take products from conception all the way into production and of course as a consequence of this i believe that god is the ultimate design engineer in fact god is the ultimate engineer the ultimate artist the ultimate creative musician historian geographer writer poet you get the idea so we're going to look at six aspects of design from my experience and they, they may not be yours uh, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to parallel each one with what scripture says so the first aspect the product is a thought in someone's mind and its design is conceived in the mind of the designer so right at the beginning right at the beginning a product is thought about what does Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 6 say, John? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us mm. To be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves so just take that in for a moment take that in for a moment he chose us before the creation of the foundation of the world he thought about you he chose you even then you were conceived in his mind just grasp that for a moment there's probably about what seven billion people on this planet today he didn't just think about seven billion he taught he thought about you and he chose you before the foundation of the earth you were chosen you were thought about he thought of your name. He thought of you as a person. Okay, point two. Designers design products with intent and the product has a purpose. Good design gives intent to each feature. Every detail is considered. There is purpose, even if it's just for fun and to be artistic, to give artistic expression. Jill, Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So he created each of us for a purpose. He didn't create you and then think, hmm, what am I going to do with him? Whilst you are still living and breathing, he has things for you to do, which he prepared in advance. Now, don't misunderstand. It's not about what you can do for God. His motivation has always been love. And he made you to be able to receive his love and to give it away. If we refer back to uh, the passage we read, point one, in Ephesians 1, he said, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. 
when he thought of you, he purposed you to be his child and for him to be your father. He chose you to be his child. The purpose was to be his child, not to do, to be his child. Point three, there are products that are mass produced and there are those that are one-offs. One-offs may be based upon a template, but each is unique. Now, if you were uh, listening a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about the church. And uh, when we talk about the church, we refer to the church as being a body. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, it says, Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. And then verse 14, And so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. So look at your body as an example of the uniqueness, how unique you are. Every fingernail is different. That finger is different to that finger. That finger is different to this finger. That nail is different to that nail. Each part of the body is unique, and each of you is unique. You are one-offs. God thought about you. He cares about you. Now, there might be similarities between each of us, but, you know, even identical twins have different fingerprints. We may look the same. We may sound the same. We may smell the same. But each of us is unique. We may have different gifts, ways of thinking, but each has a part to play. Now, I need to give you a warning here. Don't use your uniqueness as an excuse for ungodly behavior. I can't help it. God made me this way. Well, what can I do about it? That's who I am. Well, let's just refer to Romans 9 and uh, from 17 to 21. And it says, one of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who is able to resist his will? But who are you, a human, being talking back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it? Why did you make me like this? And then James 1, 13 to 15. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Mm. You know, God is at work in us to make us more like Jesus. He hasn't finished with us yet. Uh, we are work in progress. Point four. And I think this is where we got to before we got cut off. <laughs> Some designs are what are called fit and function. And in other designs, no expense is spared. Now, let me tell you, en engineers love to standardize features. Makes it more, the design more efficient. But even so, if you know the designer well, you can tell his handiwork. Why? Because the creative flair always comes through. It's the same with artists, with musicians, writers, poets. If you know the person, you can tell what his work is and what is a copy. God didn't just apply fit and function. You, didn't, you don't exist just to fulfill a function. He spared no expense for you. And if you have any doubt about it, you need to look again at the work of Jesus on the cross and how God gave up his one and only son for you. You know, his creativity, God's creativity and his flair shine through in everything he made. When God created all things, including us, at the end of each day, he said, it's good. God saw, looked at what he had made and said, it's good. And one of the verse, verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1 says, and he says this only about mankind, about you and me. God says, Let ma let's make man in our own image. We are the only created people. We are the only created beings. But he said, let's create them in our image. You also might want to look through... Um, if you want to look at how creative God is, 
and how much into detail he is. You might want to look at Exodus uh, 25 through to 28. And in, and in those chapters, God gives Moses detailed plans for the tabernacle. The detail and the creativity that God shows in the design of the tabernacle, the altars, the altars, the lampstands, the priestly garments, the poles that hold up the tabernacle, all the articles, nothing is left to chance. Functional items like the poles all have intricate detail and they carry meaning. No expense spared. God spared no expense for you. Now, point five. Once the design has been conceived and birthed, that product will always be the designer's baby. So uh, over the number of years, I've designed a number of products, not them particularly exciting, but I have to say it is like giving birth to something when you, when you, when you launch a product. And it always, you will always want to know what's happening. And when I'm out and about, uh, if I see one of the products that I designed, I get really excited and it's really, and I ask Jill, go and have a look at it. And I tell her all about it and the struggles that we had making it. And the designers, when they design something, that design is their baby. They'll be protective over it and they follow its progress. Mm. Jill, can you read for me Isaiah 49 verse yeah. 15? Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Isn't that wonderful to hear that word from God? I, I will never forget you. I will never forget you. And then we, uh, Trish read for us from Psalm 139. Uh, I'm going to read the whole uh, of the passage that Trish read because we, we, we uh, missed that. Uh, and the recording at the beginning here. You form my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it, how thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in a secret place, carefully, skillfully shaping me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you are thinking of me. Remember, designer, can never forget his baby every single moment you are thinking of me how precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in every thought oh god your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on every shore when i awake each morning you are still with me psalm 139 13 to 18 and then john 14 Verse 18, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. He never stops thinking about you and all his thoughts about you are good. He cherishes you. He will not leave you abandoned. Point six, product works best at what it was designed to do and is never as good at doing something else. I can speak from experience on this one. Uh, I had many occasions where I would get calls from people saying, your product doesn't do this, 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 and uh, why it's not working anymore. And I would say, well, it was never actually designed to do that, but it was designed to do something else, and it does it perfectly well. <laughs> so in fact, doing something else may cause a product to fail. It really is best, then, including myself here, it really is best to read the manufacturer's instructions. <laughs> now, ultimately, Adam and Eve, they disobeyed the maker's instructions, and we continue to do that today, don't we, often? And the consequences 
of the fall with Adam and Eve was that sin entered the world. You know, disobedience in our lives can cause untold damage to us and to those around us. Read the word God's given you. Listen to his voice. How has he made you to be? What has he made you to be? On a slightly different tack, um, I was reminded uh, about a passage in 1 Samuel and it's uh, the events surrounding uh, David and Goliath. And there was this point uh, just before David meets Goliath and it, it says in 1 Samuel 17, 38 to 39, it says, Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armour on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened his sword over the tunic and tried walking around. Can you imagine it? <laughs> <laughs> because he was not used to them. I can't go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Don't try to copy other people. Be the person that God created you to be. Now, yes, we can learn from one another. But don't try to be someone else. Listen to his voice above all of us. Right. So there's my six points. The product you thought of, you were thought of before the foundation of the earth. God has intent and a purpose for you. You are a one-off. You are special. He spared no expense for you. He gave birth to you and he will never ever forget you. He designed you to be a certain person. He designed you to be you. He designed you as a unique person. So I have a purpose. God has a plan for me. So what is it? Well, we need to talk to him. You say, well, I'm, you say I'm, I'm over the hill. I'm, I'm no longer in my teens. I'm no longer 20. And, and I've struggled. Life is hard. And it's all a bit late for me, purpose and all of that kind of thing. Well, a good place to start is with, a, with purpose that we all have in common. In Ephesians 1, 11 to 14, it says, In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. We are here <coughs> for the praise of his glory. Whatever purpose he has for you, Whatever he calls you to, it will always be for the praise of his glory. You know, we might think, oh, I've just got to search inside myself. Uh, and we, we start digging down inside ourselves. And if we do that without him, without listening to his voice, all that does is lead us into a downward spiral. So we find ourselves on our purpose when we lose ourselves in Christ, when we seek him first and we allow him to increase in our lives. Joe, jo, would you read for me uh, Matthew 6, verse 33? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So seek first his kingdom. And then Mark 8, 34 to 36. Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? So we seek first his kingdom and we deny ourselves. You know, the West Westminster Catechism states, man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Now, just 
get a grip of that, that we will enjoy him. We can enjoy him now. We enjoy him forever. Now, we've talked about seeking, denying, glorifying purpose. It can all sound a lot like hard work. But it's not like that. It's all about love. In 1 Corinthians 13, we read, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And in uh, Matthew 22, 36 to 40, it says, uh, the teacher comes to Jesus and says, what is the greatest commandment of the law? And Jesus replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So whatever we do, whatever we're called to do, should be rooted in and come out of love. His plans and his purpose for you are rooted in love. Turn back to your creator, to the one who made you. His thoughts about you from the moment you were born have been that of love. His intent and purpose for you has always been for you to receive his love and for you to give that love away to others. And how you express that love to others will be unique to you. He always thinks about you and his plans for you are good. Believe in the name of Jesus. Trust in his name. There's only one way to the Father and it's through Jesus. Allow the Father to pour his love on you. So what we all have in common is this. We were created for love. We were created by God to receive love and express love. At the end of 2019, I spoke about the word Selah, to pause, to reflect, to consider. And we felt that this year uh, was also a year uh, to go deeper. And uh, Rick, the other Rick, spoke about going deeper in the word going deeper in worship, deeper in our walk with God and in our witness. And in this time of lockdown, uh, you know, many people are actually more busy than ever. They've got uh, uh, teaching the children at home and they've got less time than ever. Others have got loads of time on their hands and they're, they're doing DIY. Others of you are on your own and lonely. And you don't see anybody for days. Regardless of your situation, let me encourage you to have those sailor moments to go deeper. Those moments where you pause and you go deeper in the word. You go deeper in worship and in your walk with God and in your witness. So let God speak into your life, his love. And may you find your purpose in him as you seek after him and as you give yourself to him amen, amen. let's just pray so father i want to thank you for this time that we've had and i ask that you would meet each one that we would understand and begin to get a grasp that you have loved us from the very start that you chose us, that you have, you have a purpose for us, that you choose us to be your children, that we are unique and that there is no expense spared, that you look at us and you never forget us, you've never forgotten us, you've never left us abandoned. Lord, I ask that you meet with each one and that we would experience your love and give it away as you purposed. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well.
Thank you for listening.